Hello and welcome back for another knitting video. This has sort of become a tradition in knitting videos, I don't know why. So in this next episode of the sort of vintage knitting podcast that I do occasionally on this channel, I'm looking at everything I made in the autumn of 2021, but I also think I'm going to make this sort of a looking back on the year, looking forward to next year knitting video as well. Partly because I haven't really knit a lot in in the autumn. Well, I have sort of. I shall explain. So in the previous summer edition of this podcast, I left off talking about uh, firstly my um, remake of a jacket that I've made before and it was in pieces in that video and it needed blocking and it is now made up, which is lovely. And it's already going a little bit bobbly, a little bit pilled because I wear it all the time. I mentioned in that video and I'll mention again, this year I've really tried to knit things that I'm actually going to wear as opposed to things that I enjoy knitting but maybe sit in the cupboard and never see the light of day again. And I had this jacket from a free vintage knitting pattern on, available online and I knitted in grey, it was one of the first things I ever knit from a vintage pattern and I just don't wear as much grey anymore, so I wanted one that went with my wardrobe generally. That previous one was also an acrylic blend, so it looked cheaper. This is an alpaca, Drops Nepal's this one is, and yeah, I'm really pleased with it. I had to order more to do the crochet neckband because I had a terrifying round of yarn chicken with this cardigan. And the other thing I have done is I have reinforced the centre front opening with a grey grain ribbon and that is because the nature of this crochet band it really wanted to curl in and I wore it like that for several months and then I remembered that one of the things I wanted to do was add a grey grain band to my Yell cardigan which I finished at the beginning of the year I think yes and um, it, it's never quite I've never really been completely happy with it it's very itchy um, and I've sort of been addressing that but I also wanted to reinforce the button band because it just, no matter how much I blocked it, it wouldn't lie flat. And now it's got a button, button band and I've put one around the hem as well because this little bit wanted to flip up all the time as well. Then it's reinforced. I'm so much happier with it. It looks so much better. Uh, I'm so much more likely to wear it. You can see that this is still happening where I steeked it. So I might put another row of ribbon in if I can be bothered. But to be honest, that doesn't bother me that much as much as like, the wrong side showing. Yeah, my the reverse of my fair isle is not particularly neat, so I didn't want it flipping around and revealing its ugly guts. Uh, so I'm much happier with it now. And it was so successful on this that I also did it on this, and now it hangs, just looks so much less homemade is the only way I can describe it. So I'm really pleased with that. There will possibly be a video, I did film the process of putting in the grow grain band, so there might be a little sort of technique video on that coming soon if you would like to more know more about that. So yes, that's what this one looks like made up. As I say, I've worn it a lot. I will look up the details and tell you exactly what the pattern is. So the pattern is available for free on Ra Ravelry. It's called Jacket Number 487 and it was originally published by Emile Burnett and Sons Company and it's available on a website called freevintageknitting.com. Easy to remember. Uh, so yeah, I, I really recommend it. I used, like I say, it was Drops Nepal I used for this and I think the colorway is something like Forest Mix or Green Blue Mix, something like that. But I've been really pleased with it. Okay, moving on. What did I work on after this? That was the sort of work in progress from the last video. And then I didn't actually show you anything else I was working on at the time because they were going to be part of a bigger video series I was making for Halloween. However, I ended up being very ill around, well, it's not that I was very ill. I went to a ball. So at the last minute, I um, applied to go to the, what are they called? Prior Attire Romantic Weekend here in the UK and um, I got a last minute place. I had a week to get ready and I went and I did much too much dancing that was good for me. I kind of forgot that I was disabled for a little bit and I had terrible payback. Um, so most of October and November, I had to really take it easy and, you know, recover from my irresponsible choices. It was very fun, but yeah, it was, it did mean that I missed out on Halloween season, which of course is big money here on the costuming section of YouTube. So I was planning to make a historically inspired witch costume and so I knitted some things to go with that costume. I still think I want to make that costume, I might just make it next year. I have all the fabric so I don't know what I'm going to do with it otherwise, but I did finish the things I was knitting 
so the first thing was this. So this is a triangular shawl. Am I going to be able to get it all in shot? No, because it's quite large. And it's called, the pattern is called Shawl for an Art Lover. I'm going to have to look up the designer. Carrie Westerman. So Shawl for an Art Lover by Carrie Westerman. And this is made in a two-ply alpaca that I got in a charity shop. I honestly, it was sort of unbranded um, labels. It looked like sort of dead stock or something. So I don't, I can't tell you any more about that yarn apart from that it was two-ply alpaca. And uh, I wanted this to sort of have like a textured, lacy, witchy feel. And this pattern was just perfect. Um, sort of the concept for my witch costume was a bit like she was a historical time traveler or that she'd was immortal or something. I can't remember. Um, <laughs> and so I deliberately chose elements for her outfit that were from different time periods. And this shawl is um, inspired by, or according to the designer, it's inspired by the Art Nouveau architecture of the city of Glasgow. And so when I saw that it was inspired by um, the sort of arts and craft and Art Nouveau movement, that is an area of particular interest for me in terms of my academic dress history side. And so I knew I had to make this pattern for my, for my witchy shawl the biggest shawl I've ever made and it's the first time I've done a really big lace pattern like this. I, I enjoyed it, you know. I don't know if I'd do another one in a hurry because it was a lot of concentrating. But yeah, it's really, I'm really pleased with it actually and I've worn it a lot this winter just as a as a shawl because being two ply it's really lightweight and being alpaca it's quite soft and yet it's big so you can really wrap up warm in it. Yes, the pattern is essentially just a chart so if you're not familiar with lace charts this might not be a pattern for you and this is a pattern that I bought off Ravelry as well and I finished it in August apparently, August the 12th. The only issue I had with this scarf is uh, how to block it. I do not have enough floor space in my house to block a shawl this big. <laughs> without people standing on it. And so I ended up, somebody gave me a tip to peg it on the washing line and uh, it worked relatively well, but not quite. You can sort of see that the edges are still rolling over where at the cast off edge and things, which is a bit of a shame. And the lace pattern could probably be more defined with more blocking, but I'm happy with it as it is. I did my first ever Estonian nups. I uh, generally don't like things with bobbles. I don't like knitting them and I don't like wearing them, but these are somehow subtler. They look less like a bobble and more like uh, embossing or something like that. So yeah, I'm very pleased with it. The only thing I would say, because I used this cheap unbranded yarn, it doesn't look very, I'm gonna say shiny, but I don't think that's what I mean. I think it could look really sleek and elegant and silky in a nicer lace yarn. And I kind of wish I'd chosen something like that. But in a way, because this was for the witchy project, I needed it to look a bit rough and ready and homespun. So I think I made the right choice, but if I were to knit this pattern again, I would definitely choose a slinkier, more iridescent yarn, I think. And I think then this pattern would really shine. So will I ever make another lace shawl? I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll see. I'd, I had fun with that one. And it was surprisingly quick. I thought it was going to take me forever, but it didn't actually take that long. So that's a bonus. Uh, this is one more thing that I knitted for my uh, witchy Halloween costume that never got made. And this kicked off a whole round of sock knitting. I've become absolutely obsessed with sock knitting in the past few months. And it started with these pheasant golf stockings, they're called. So the pattern for these came from, I think a 1930s knitting book I have. And so it was for men's golf stockings. And so they've, golf stockings are, traditionally you wear breeches or plus fours on the golf course. And so you wear knee high socks. And so they're turnover top and you could do, the, the, the pattern book had various styles and you could have fair isle tops and you could have other decorative tops. And it's got sort of, they've got sort of a ribbed textured design in them. Um, so it was one of those patterns where it was interesting to knit, but not so complicated that you lost your place all the time. And I had to, I had to make the feet, I had to make the feet shorter because I wanted them to fit me and obviously they were for a man. Because they were top down, that was easy enough. I just got to where it was long enough and then started shaping. Uh, but they've got shaping in the, I don't know if you can see that, they've got, oh, you can kind of see in the rib there how um, they have shaping for the calf, which was really interesting to do. I have knitted stockings before, but they were two ply 
over the knee lacy 1940 stockings and they were a lot of work these were still a lot of work but they were more enjoyable to knit for me and the reason they're pheasant stockings is this yarn is from uh, west yorkshire spinners and they did a collection of um, bird themed yarns so they had like a wood pigeon and they had a robin and this is the pheasant one and you can see i very deliberately where I try to very deliberately offset the stripes so I knit one from the inside of the ball and one from the outside of the ball so that they definitely don't match up but it's actually kind of subtle so you don't really notice <laughs> which is a bit of a shame I was hoping for a bit more of a contrast but they're kind of um these self-striping yarns are, are quite new to me I never really made anything in these and I think they look quite effective actually I wanted my because these were for the witch costume in my head witches have stripy stockings so <laughs> I knew I wanted stripy socks and I did contemplate doing odds and ends of different colors and making my own stripe and then uh, I was in the yarn shop and I was like why am I doing this to myself so I bought self-striping yarn I don't know if this pattern would be available anywhere online it's literally in a pamphlet that I have in my collection so maybe I'll scan it and make it available for you if you really want to knit yourself a pair of men's golf stockings let me know this was from a collection of knitting patterns this was from a wool craft I think or something something like that the patterns version and they have all these niche items that you can knit or that we would consider niche that were obviously widespread at one point in history you know like kneecaps and things like that you know that people obviously had a need to knit at some point because they published a lot of patterns about them and it's sort of weird to think that those were I was going to say obligatory but that's not what I mean ambiguous no omnipresent not what I mean either ubiquitous I think is what I mean that everybody had them everybody needed them and um everybody made them yeah and this, this golf stockings was one of those things that I'd always kind of wanted to try because I see them so often and I think did people really play that much golf but apparently they did or perhaps they always dressed for golf different thing entirely isn't it yeah and I wear these um I've worn these around the house quite a lot over my tights because I am um, I have cold legs and feet and so uh they just make me feel a bit like I'm in the worst witch or something and I like that about them so very pleased with those and turns out uh, in nearly 100 years sock construction really hasn't changed that much very standard top-down sock um, can never remember what the heels are called but you knit a heel flap you, in, you turn the heel pick up the stitches with the gusset and knit you know it's not one of those fancy heels uh, I did like um on the heel slip stitch pattern offset slip stitch pattern just because i find that these if i do this as opposed to lines i've done one with lines actually i prefer the look of this and i find they don't wear out as quickly as other reinforced heel designs i don't know why so that's those i've really been impressed with this west yorkshire spinners yarn actually i must say and i've knit a lot of things in that since i've discovered it just nice to know it's british wool really because the british wool is um the british wool industry is really struggling so i like to try and buy british wool if i can but of course it can be quite expensive but the west yorkshire spinners is quite affordable so i don't mind moving on so yes like i say this started a mammoth round of sock knitting and some of these socks are christmas presents but um the first pair i've just realized i'm wearing them so i've got to take them off so now that i am double vaccinated and in fact i've just had my booster jab as well the other day i've been venturing out into society a little bit more and so um in my town we have a local yarn shop that opened literally the beginning of march 2020 so you can imagine the past few years they've had and so um once i felt more confident going back out and interacting with people and i'd had my vaccinations and everything like that i went to this local yarn shop to support them and they have a weekly knitting club so i go most weeks and i sit and i knit with my knitting buddies and we chat about knitting uh, but they also have every two months they have something uh they have a sock knitting club essentially and they commission the shop the store owner commissions a yarn dyer to dye a unique colorway for the shop and we all knit a pair of socks in the same colorway of yarn which is unique you can only get it if you sign up for the sock event at this yarn store it's a really great idea and sometimes we all knit the same pattern and sometimes we all knit different patterns but it's a mystery it's a mystery what colorway the yarn is going to be so it's a little bit of jeopardy and the very first one i signed up for the dyer was somebody called dye candy and um this was the yarn 
<laughs> and when it turned up, I was like, oh my God, no way. I hate it. It's so not me. And um, this particular sock Saturday, you then had a lucky dip of patterns that the dyer had suggested. And I got my pattern and I started it and I hated it. I really did not enjoy it. And so I did my own thing. I went on Ravelry and I looked for another pattern. And this was a free Vogue pattern. And then I did it wrong. <laughs> so I ended up making up my own thing and just doing socks the way I always do socks. But I've essentially, this, this pattern here is um, what came from the, the Vogue pattern. But it was supposed to be, you can see that mine is like on the side of the foot so that from the front it looks like that. And of course from the front it was supposed to look like that. I put my heel flap in the wrong place essentially. So yeah, I just had to wing it. So was the, this was the first second pair of socks I made this year and I was sort of getting back into it and I was like, oh God. So I was knitting these socks in this neon yellow pink speckled colorway. I was thinking, I hate these. I am never going to wear these. I love these socks. Now that they're finished, I can't tell you, I feel so cute when I wear them. I feel like a duckling is the only way I can describe it. And like every time I look down at my yellow, bright yellow feet, it just, it just makes me smile. So I absolutely get it now. It's a really good quality sock yarn as well. I'm putting them back on because my feet are cold. So it's a really soft, it's a, it's a merino, merino nylon sock yarn and I don't tend to make my socks in anything that fancy but oh it does they do feel nice to wear I must confess so um I'm a bit of a convert to the old um sock knitting you know the old hand dyes so this was the September sock Saturday club and so I had some of this yarn left and because it's hand dyed it's it's quite pricey I am um, don't normally buy that sort of yarn just because it's out of my budget really and so I knew I wanted to use up every scrap so I made myself another pair of socks. <laughs> but the thing is, with a yellow this bright, I really didn't know what to sort of coordinate it with. Uh, and then something came into my local yarn store and I thought, that's it, that's what I'm having. And that was West Yorkshire Spinners again, but they did a collaboration with Zandra Rhodes. Let me tell you, in her retirement, Zandra Rhodes is making the coin. She's everywhere at the minute. I don't know, she's like branded. <laughs> What should you call it when you like franchise out your name or whatever? I don't know. She's she's doing that. She's like everything you can buy Zandra Rose branded, uh, including yarn now. When I saw this yarn, I thought, oh, that's going to make a brilliant pair of socks with my um, my dye candy hand dyes. Look at those. I'm so <laughs> pleased with them. I think they look great because this you can see this colorway. It's kind of got dark blue, but it's also got dark brown. I feel like that really picks up the black gray specks in the yellow and the pink of course. But what I did, obviously this bit is self-striping and then I knitted in the stripes here. I saw this idea, I found a free pattern again on Ravelry. I saw this idea, there was a lace pattern as well, but I didn't end up doing the lace pattern. And um, I just did the stripes and the contrast heel flap. And yeah, I'm really pleased with them. <laughs> I can't believe it. Hilariously though, the Zandra Rhodes, um, or Zandra, the Zandra Rhodes uh, West Yorkshire Spinners yarn is like about a pound fifty more expensive than the ordinary stuff. And I was like, well, that's the name you're paying for, isn't it? That's the thing with uh, this branded yarn. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so this was my third pair of socks. And like I say, I was really pleased with them. I really like the way these look. Again, really comfy and having the, um, the hand dye merino at the, at the cuff is really comfy as well. Really, um, nice against the skin and then having the body and the slightly more hard wearing um, West Yorkshire spinners. Uh, it was quite a good idea actually, quite a good tactic. So pair of socks number three. Because I was on this sock knitting run, I decided I was going to knit socks for Christmas presents for people. And I had some of that Zandra Rhodes left. I had quite a lot of that Zandra Rhodes left actually. So I knit an entire pair and these are going to be a gift for somebody um, in just the Zandra Rhodes. And I think actually it still looks quite effective on, on its own. But these I did, which I don't ever do, toe up. And I've got, I've got an unusual heel. In the pattern it was called a flegal heel. Never heard it called that before. But I think I did these two at a time as well, just because by this point I was getting a little bit done with socks and I wanted to try some different things because that's one of the things I've been wanting to do with my knitting is I always like to try and practice new skills as often as I can. Keep things interesting, you know. And so this pattern, another free pattern on Ravelry. Can you tell I'm a cheapskate? It's called, give me a minute. 
I smell snow. And it's the point being that you're supposed to watch Gilmore Girls as you knit it, because I smell snow is um, a quote from Gilmore Girls. I will tell you who the designer is. Oh, good. It's somebody Scandinavian. Are you ready? I'm about to butcher this. Sani Kuevumaki. Finnish. That's what nationality they are. So I apologise for butchering your name, but I will put a link so that you do not have to decipher my terrible Finnish pronunciation uh, so you can find it if you're interested in this pattern. Yeah, I have recently watched Gilmore Girls for the first time because obviously I was um, sort of too young the first time around when it was on uh, terrestrial telly. So I watched it on Netflix and I did get really into it. It's really cozy and it did... I, I don't know why, this pattern did definitely give me sort of Gilmore Girl feels and it is a really nice moment, this like um, this lace pattern's pretty straightforward and it looks like snowflakes and I did think about those sort of cozy, snowy scenes in Gilmore Girls. But yeah, like, off topic for a second, so there's like seven seasons of Gilmore Girls, so I watched all of them and then there's the Year in the Life specials for hour and a half specials. Bloody well ends on a cliffhanger. Why did I bother? Why did I bother? So unsatisfying. I hate that. That's pair of socks number, what are we up to? Four. Pair of socks number five. Again, these are another present. These are for a man. That's why they're so big. And these, I did the same thing as the um, Sandra Rhodes and Neon Yellow Stripe in that I used up these are odds and ends of my pheasant yarn. And then I looked in the pheasant yarn and picked out one of the colours. And this is another West Yorkshire Spinners, and this is West Yorkshire Spinners, and so they were the same, exactly the same almost colour. And uh, I knit these, but I did these, again, I did these toe up. And I tried to do these toe at a time as well, but it got it got too confusing. So I had to um, I had to stop that when I got to the heel. I couldn't, I couldn't deal with it. Um, but yeah, I, this is a different sort of heel to that other one. And I think I prefer this version of a toe up heel to the others. But yeah, I've really enjoyed knitting my socks and my Christmas gifts. My sock blockers aren't quite long enough, so I've done my best. But oh look, you can see in that heel, actually, how the um, the self-striping colour is the main colour I've picked out there. So I quite like this idea of the, of the stripes, but um, it was a bit of a nightmare because when I got to a bit that was the same colour, of course... Once I got to a bit in the south striping yarn that was the same colour as the main colour of yarn, I had to snip it and weave the ends in and everything because then I just didn't have a stripe. And even here, you can see that orange stripe at a distance kind of disappears, so you don't really notice it And at the, at the toe there. So I kind of wish I'd gotten rid of the orange stripes altogether, but oh well. I'm sure the, uh, the recipient of these socks will be happy with them. So my next pair of socks are these, and this is another sock Saturday, and this time the dyer was... Rainbow Fusions, which is not a dyer I'd heard of before, but um, they even, I thought this was really cute, they even put the um, the name of the event, the Sock Saturday, on the labels, which I thought was really sweet. And so this time around we all had the same pattern, as well as the same mystery yarn, we all had the same pattern. And the pattern is called Twinkly Toes by Lula Bella Knits, and so that's why the yarn is also called Twinkly Toes. Now, if you know me, you know that I do not like pink particularly this shade of pink. So <laughs> I was really, I was feeling a little bit unlucky with my mystery yarn choices here because, um, yeah, not a fan of this sort of shade, but I do actually think it's made a really nice, it's gone really well with this pattern. It's made a really beautiful pair of socks. This is like a textured stitch where you sort of, um, you knit three together, no, yeah, you knit three together and then knit into the same stitch three times in the same stitch. So you sort of are doing a decrease and then an increase in the same stitch to create that lovely textured effect. And I do really like it and I'll definitely knit this pattern again, but I'm not sure how I feel about this color. And whereas with the yellow ones, when I put them on, I was like, whoop, nope, I've changed my mind. These I'm still not sure about, which is a bit of a shame. So these might become a gift for somebody as well. But um, I, like I say, I do really like the pattern. So maybe I'll make that again, top down. Uh, twisted rib and it's just most socks you um you do the pattern on the back of the sock as well as the front but this isn't very stretchy so you need the back to be smooth really to to be able to wear them and then i did the um the standard slip stitch heel which was what came with the pattern as opposed to the offset one again can't remember any of their names yeah i quite like it it's fine so as a nice pair of socks but they don't really float me boat
sorry. So that is finally an end to the socks. And of course, with knitting all these socks, you get a 100 gram skein of yarn and you kind of use maybe 60 grams of it and then there's some left and it's not cheap, this hand dyed stuff. So I was looking for something to do with all my odds and ends. And like I say, I've knit some of them up into other pairs of socks and done a mix and match, but then that required me to buy more yarn to coordinate with it. So I was thinking this isn't really very efficient. And so what I'm doing instead is I made decided I'm gonna make a scrap sock blanket. And I looked at various patterns and then I remembered that Yule um, from Yule Thyssenden Yul Thyssen? I'm not sure. Yul, she's a, she's a costumer. She has, and I've spotted it in a few of her videos and I love it, one of these beekeepers quilts and uh, where you knit these little hexy puffs and then join them together. I love that and I've always wanted one, so I've started making one. <laughs> so how many hexy puffs have I got so far? Let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Is that all of them? I think that's all of them. I've dropped one. Where did it go? So yeah, you can see here, it's a little bit like a, a history, a time capsule of Sock Saturdays, because I've got, I got three out of my um, dye candy. I've got three out of the, um, the Rainbow Fusions one, but I've still got loads of this left, so I might use that for something else. And then this was some, I knit years ago, a pair of socks. I was, in, I was away somewhere and I bought a skein of yarn in a local yarn shop. I like to do that if I go on holiday and I see a local yarn shop just because I like to support independent businesses like that. And um, I was quite disappointed with this yarn actually. It faded really badly and when I was knitting it my hands went green. Not good. Uh, but I had a little bit of that left and so I haven't wanted to knit it up into anything else because I know the colour will run. So I thought, oh, well, I can make some hexy puffs. So that's the last of that gone. And then this was a mini skein that I got in a charity shop for a pound. And I've got plenty of this left, but this is the first one of these that I've made. And it's, it's, it's surprisingly similar to this, but this one's a bit more, more mottled. So I think I have a, I have a, have a colour preference there, don't you think? Obviously, I'm nowhere near a quilt yet, and this is going to take forever. But I actually think it's quite an efficient way to use up scraps and I've got loads of toy stuffing as well in my in my loft that various people have given me over the years that's basically just insulating the loft at the minute so I thought I might as well use that and I'm looking forward to eventually having enough of these to start sewing them together but uh, I've got a while to go yet. I must confess as well I haven't actually bought the pattern. I am um, having made so many toe up and toe down socks in my life I looked at these and was like, oh, that's like if you do a toe up sock and then change to a toe down sock straight afterwards and you get a hexy puff. And so that's what I did. I um, figured it out for myself. I haven't bought the pattern. I might buy the pattern and just see how they recommend you do it and join them together, but it is five pound. I'm stingy, really. But these are so addictive to knit. I really enjoy knitting them. And it's just nice, like when I finish another project and I have yarn left over, to be like, oh, and now I can knit a little hexy puff before I start on anything else, before I have to commit to anything else, you know? These are quite nice fillers, I suppose, huh, in more ways than one. I imagine over the coming year, you will see many more of these as I get to them. But after all those socks, I decided it was time to return to some garment knitting. And so I started on a 1940s jumper cardigan thing that I have wanted to make for ages. And this is because it's in uh, the ITV series Home Fires. I watched Home Fires, I marathoned it when I wasn't very well this time last year. And I was doing a lot of sewing from bed and a lot of knitting in bed. And if you don't know, ITV's Home Fires is a series about um, a women's organization called the Women's Institute. And um, it's during World War II. A little context for Americans. So the WI stands for the Women's Institute and the Women's Institute is a women's organization and they have a long history of campaigning for women's rights and women's welfare and children's welfare as well. But it's um, to set up a WI, you have to be associated with a village of less than 4,000 people. Or originally that was it. It might've changed in contemporary times, I don't know. And so this series follows this WI in this village in the north of England and it's about rural life, it's about ordinary people, it's about sort of, they have some more middle class people, they have the doctor's wife and they have farmers and things and it's got, this series is just brilliant for the knitwear. 
it's got some really cracking examples. Somebody really did their research. They were obviously knitted from vintage patterns and uh, it's they were obviously knitted from vintage patterns that somebody found online because a lot of them I have been able to find readily available on Etsy, on Pinterest, things like that. And I know lots of other people have knitted them as well. And they talk about knitting a home fires jumper. Well, anyway, this was my home fires jumper. Um, and it's this one. It's worn by the character Laura in one of the first few episodes. And I saw this jumper and I've been thinking about it for a year. That's how much I liked it. So I knew I wanted to knit it and I eventually got round to buying the yarn and knitting it up. And I found the pattern. I've been looking for the, I was looking for the pattern for ages. Typically, it's one of those things, it's keyword search. Embroidered jumper, cardigan, sweater, blouse, home fires, button up. Eventually, I found this pattern on Etsy and I will leave a link if you are interested as well because it's a really cracking design. And so this is still technically a work in progress, I suppose, because I've knitted all the pieces, but I have to embroider all these flowers on it and um, well I got to here on one front and I thought F that for a laugh it was supposed to be in every single one of these diamonds and I've gotten this far which is kind of like quite nicely underbust for me on the front and the back and I don't know if I'm gonna do any more. The sleeves, thankfully it's short sleeved so there's only one row so those weren't so bad but yeah I'm gonna sew it up now and see how I think if it needs embroidering more flowers on or whether I can live with it. This is supposed to be an economy design. I don't know really what's particularly yarn saving about it. It doesn't have any of those classic make do and mend elements. I suppose it doesn't have a button stand. It just has a crochet loops and buttons on the very edge. So maybe that's it. But it's a really sweet design and I was so chuffed when I found this pattern, I tell you. And it's got, you can see, look at that sleeve. Look at the height of that sleeve. That's to, that's because it's going to be a puff sleeve. Oh, I'm really excited about making this up. And I have been embroidering these flowers for fucking ages and I'm so bored of it. So I finally got to a point where I think I'm done with it. Just need sewing up. But this, of course, has sparked an obsession. And I think I'm now going to knit at least two more jumpers from the series Home Fires because I've been able to find several of the patterns. I'm just obsessed. Like, I, I don't know. It's just, you know, you know, sometimes you just find a look that speaks to you and it's your aesthetic or whatever. That was this show for me. I was like, yes, this is what I want in my life. I'm going to spend the next year knitting jumpers from Home Fires probably. So while I was procrastinating all this embroidery, I started knitting something else. I wanted another garment. I wanted to make something. I wanted to knit a garment in hand dyed. Having been introduced to the world of hand dyed yarn through this sock Saturday club, I wanted to make myself a garment. And so I thought about patterns. I thought about buying a pattern and then I thought about one I already have, which um, I get lots of compliments on whenever I wear this top. And this is a Riz the Rizzo blouse from Poison Girls. And you've probably seen me wear it in various videos. And so I thought, oh, I'll make another one of those because as much as I like the pattern, pink is not really my color. And because this is quite corally, it's all right, but it just doesn't really go with a lot of things. So I made it in gray instead. <laughs> so this is uh, yarn is from Life in the Long Grass and it's the colorway is called Corrode. And you can see it's sort of got these like an oil spill tones is the only way I can describe it and this is one of those modern patterns which is knit seamlessly from the top down which I very rarely do because I don't like that and it's really confusing for my dyslexic brain to understand if they're talking about the left shoulder which way am I looking at it is that left as a person looking at the jumper is that left as a person wearing a jumper because that's different it's a different shoulder you know so I struggle with that sort of pattern but I persevered with this pattern I should disclose I was originally a tester for the Rizzo blouse pattern so I did get it for free and so that this pink one I made as a test knitter but I liked the pattern so much I wanted to make another one <laughs> however I think it needs blocking can you see how tiny this is I'll hold it up compared to my other one it's gonna need blocking quite aggressively it's minuscule so I think it will stretch out. I seem to remember the original was pretty small as well. The first one I made was pretty small and it like, it's got a lot of stretch in it, so it should be fine. And it does fit. I can get it on, 
but I think I would like it to be a little bit longer. It's very cropped and I don't think I want it that cropped. I think I would like it to at least reach the top of my jeans or whatever. Yeah, every now and again I like to knit one of these modern patterns just for the practice because people love them but I suppose because I'm a dressmaker I don't mind sewing things up but a lot of people really hate the sewing up with knitting, don't they? But I would rather knit something flat any day than in the round. Seamless like this, but this is a really cute design and I have really enjoyed it. And this is another one of those that I wanted to make because I'm trying to fill some gaps in my wardrobe. I have a lot of 1940s knit tops and I do wear them quite often, to be honest, but I've gone for very jazzy statement ones. Apart from that lacy, fair owl one which is a bit more neutral so I wanted something a bit more wearable every day so that's how come I went for this one and so you can see it's got this sort of yoke design with the yarn overs and you've got these little eyelets and then this is seed stitch or moss stitch as I was taught to call it and it's, it's a little cap sleeve so you don't you just pick up stitches for the sleeve for the rib all of this is continuous so I do really like this design I do really recommend this pattern but yeah the sizing. If you're longing the torso, make sure you add extra rows. <laughs> um, I've classed this one as a work in progress because it needs blocking really. That's why that's it's in this section of the video and it's not good weather so I don't know whether I'll get it to dry. I might have to wait till the sun comes till I can block it because it will never dry in my house otherwise. But this, um, the designer from Poison Girls is Amy Apple and she does lots of vintage inspired designs and so if you were wanting to get into vintage knitting but uh, you're intimidated by vintage knitting patterns or vintage knitting patterns don't come in your size, which is likely, these Poison Girls designs are kind of rockabilly pin-up style and are modern construction techniques and modern sizing. And they're quite size inclusive. I think they go up to at least 54, I think, inch bust. So that might be an option for you. But like I say, they're rockabilly, so they do tend to be more 50s, 60s style knits than 1940s ones. Okay, so we're nearly there. Let's keep going. So I have two more things I want to talk about. The first is a book that I picked up literally this morning in a charity shop, which is uh, uh, from the 1940s. It's called Knitting for All Illustrated. And I have another one of this type of book called Practical Knitting Illustrated which has a few more like um, guidelines, I suppose, knitting techniques and things and how to cast on. But this one is mostly designs. So the part of the reason why I was so keen to pick this one up is because <laughs> I've got a brassiere, a knitted brassiere pattern. And um, I see these floating about online that you can buy as digital downloads and things. And sometimes I like I, I frequently do. Um, but it's just nice to have the real book, really. And this one's in quite good condition. And I did wonder about um, if the, because this is quite obviously from the same series as my other book, I did wonder if the patterns would be repeated, but it looks like they're all different. And um, there's a really great variety of stuff. I mean, like a knitted fez. That's something, isn't it? <sighs> Look at that three-cornered hat. <laughs> she looks like a cat. So yeah, it's a really interesting little book. And men's women's children's as these 1940s books often are gloves stockings waistcoats i was particularly fond of a knitted house coat which i might um make for myself i mean the underwear i'm gonna have to knit myself some of this 1940s underwear because i think it's so funny but i quite i was quite pleased with this house coat i thought that was quite jazzy and the um the, the caption something religious oh true true sister to joseph's coat of many colors you'll be getting up earlier in the morning to put it on I think that's bold of you to assume, mate, but okay. And then they have an option for if you'd like a less colourful colourful version, which I think is funny. Just flicking through it, I've got completely distracted now. Bed jackets. Ah, oh, blimey. Look at that bed jacket. So a new collection, a new, new collection, a new addition to my vintage knitting collection. And so because I've been really good all year and I've knit mostly very sensible things. Oh my god, I haven't even talked about the dress. So of course the other thing I knit this year was the collar for my Gunny Saxmas dress. And this pattern, <sighs> there's definitely a mistake in this pattern. I, I knitted it several times and it still wasn't right. And I'm not sure about my choice, whether my choice of yarn was appropriate for this design, but I am very pleased with the finished look finally. If you've seen this video, you will know that I had 
trouble is an understatement with this collar. I had a cr like an existential crisis over this bloody collar. So um, I am happy to say that I am finally at peace with it and I like the way it looks and everything, but it was a struggle. This yarn is Rico Creative Lame. It was just the cheapest Lame yarn I could find. And the pattern came from a 1940s book in my collection, which I think is direct. The first few pages are missing, so I'm not entirely sure what it is. I think it's direct, but yeah, like I say, I'm not giving you that pattern. I'm not giving that pattern away or sending you a link or whatever, because it's it was wrong. I had to do a lot of figuring out for myself what was going on there. And so the last thing I want to show you is my gift to myself. Having knit lots of very practical wearable items this year, I decided it was time for a f***ing wacky 1940s jumper. So I haven't actually got the original pattern with me, I forgot to pick it up, but it's uh, this willow pattern jumper from Best Way, and I've had this in my stash for ages, and I've had the yarn to make it for ages, but like I say, I've been trying to be make more wearable things because how many wacky 1940s jumpers does a girl need? But I finally made a start. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's so balmy. So obviously it's supposed to be an imitation of Willow Pattern China, which, oh, I've just dropped a load of stitches there, which of course is a very poor imitation of um, traditional Chinese pottery uh, that was very popular in Britain in the 19th and 20th centuries. And so it's supposed to be this tr traditional blue and white pattern. And I went for this blue and white in keeping with the original. But as with a lot of original 1940s fair Isle patterns, the instructions were just K1W, K2B, K1W. <laughs> God, like such a, such a absolute mind f is the only term I can think of. You have to concentrate so hard, you have to constantly count. They're really difficult to work with, written out that way, I find. So I made myself a chart. So I spent an afternoon charting it out and the sleeves. So this is the sleeve pattern. So I've made my own chart. And if you want to use this chart, it is uh, my Ravelry project page for this pattern. There is a link to this chart, but I warn you, it's not perfect. Um, I've definitely made some mistakes. I will try and update it before this video goes up to remove a few of the glaring mistakes, but I'm only up to about here. So I don't know about this, the rest of this section or the sleeves, I haven't even started that yet. But that, this has been so much more useful. It's just so much more the way I my brain works with a, with a, like a, um, a pattern like this rather than K1B, right? Okay, so that's knit one blue, you know, it's just a nightmare. So this is currently what I'm working on. And this is, like I say, this is my Christmas treat to myself. I can finally, having had a really sensible year of knitting sensible things, knit <laughs> an absolutely wacky 1940s colorwork jumper. So that's everything I'm working on. I realize this is probably a really long video already, so I'm gonna keep my wrap up short. Yeah, I've had a really good year of knitting. I've definitely knit less things than last year. Last year I knit more than I sewed, and this year I definitely sewed more than I knit. So I'm fine with that, I'm fine with that balance. I made some really lovely wearable pieces that I'm really proud of, that I wear a lot. I have two new staple cardigans. I've made this Mary Wallen that I'm really pleased with and is much more wearable now I've faffed about with it. I've knit quite a few things for other people as well. I've knit presents, Christmas presents, which I haven't done in a long time. So yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with where I am at my knitting. In terms of what I want to make next year, looks like I'm going to be knitting some jumpers from Home Fires. I also have plans to do more 1940s themed content generally next year. So I do want to do more 1940s knitting patterns, 1930s. I'd like to do some crochet because I need to get better at crochet. I'm really bad at it. Yeah, I really want to focus on these historical projects. I want to grade more patterns for you. I want to experiment with dif different techniques. I want to become more of an expert, I think is is what I'm trying to get at here. And I want to share more of that with you because I think about 1940s knitting patterns a lot, more than I care to admit really, it's kind of embarrassing. And so I want to share that joy with you all really. So I'm gonna do a few experiments as well with yarn weight, with tension swatches. I want to make a video about grading patterns. I want to grade them myself and make them freely available to you. I also want to try some of the more unusual ones, particularly these coupon saving ones, these 
make to amend ones. I think that's really interesting. And I think as a somebody who's trying to be more sustainable as a, as a knitter going forward, it's always interesting to see what we can learn from the past, in particular this coupon saving era, um, this era of great hardship in the 40s. I think we can borrow lessons from in terms of um, the climate crisis and being more sustainable with what we do. Not that the climate crisis is our responsibility, you know what I mean? I wish to be clear. It is not our responsibility as knitters to knit less to save the planet when there are giant corporations destroying it. No, that's not what I mean. But if you're like me, these things play on your mind and it's empowering to feel like you're doing something. So that's sort of what I want to play with next year. Apart from that, probably going to knit some more socks. I'm probably going to knit and carry on going to my sock club because I do really enjoy it. Knitting is often such a solitary activity, so to be able to do it in a group and talk to other people who are just as enthusiastic as I am about it is really nice uh, because obviously most of the time when I talk to you about it, there's not actually anybody there. So yeah, more 1940s stuff, more socks, definitely more hexy puffs, and hopefully you will come along for the ride with me. So I will say this video is going up on the 31st of December. So I will say happy new year. Thank you for sticking with me for another year here on YouTube. I hope you will join me next year and uh, yeah, many happy returns of the season to you. So, so all the best for 2022. Thank you very much for watching.